Hi, Froggy here. What I've got for you today is charging system fault. Now what is charging system fault? I was trying to start the car uh, a couple weeks ago after I would uh, finished up at the gym and I turned the key and very very briefly the engine just tried to turn over a little bit like you had a dead battery. It, it, I, it made a sound, uh, I felt the starter and then it flashed a sign on the driver information center, it flashed a message and the message said charging system fault and it was very brief and then the car started up I, I was on I didn't have to try it twice I still kept the key turning and it started up normal so there was a very brief message on the driver information center DIC it said charging system fault where does that come from well, it comes from the PCM the power control module power control module is communicating with your charging system, your battery, your alternator, the regulator inside the alternator, everything to see if everything's ready to start the car. And the PCM briefly saw a problem and that's why it flashed that message to me. Well, what was what was wrong? I don't know. That's why I went I went online with a couple of my buddies um, uh, especially I want to say thank you to LLC5 he's a master technician and he helps me out with uh, my Corvette because he's got a Corvette and uh, he's usually uh, really good about figuring stuff out I do not have all the factory equipment uh, especially a tool called a Tech 2 Tech 2 is a two three thousand dollar tool that the factory service manual always tells you when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your car hook up the Tech 2. Well I ain't got a Tech 2 but uh, we're gonna try and work this through anyway now I should mention this message I only got it once it was intermittent I haven't got it again in two weeks uh, so it could be like uh, you know one of those hiccups when you're sitting at your computer because this car is full of computers um, but here's what uh, what my buddy LLC5 said to check. He said to check the wiring harness at the alternator. The regulator's inside the alternator, so we can't test the regulator. We could take this whole thing out, which I have done before, and bring it to uh, an electrical automotive electrical shop. Just a second. Okay, I'm back. I had to let the ice cream man go by. His uh, his ice cream music's pretty loud. <laughs> anyway, we could take this out, take it to a mo automotive electrical shop, and get it tested. We could take the battery out, bring that to an automotive electrical shop or Pet Boy or Craig, and get that tested too. But I'm pretty sure the battery's good. It's only a couple years old, and there are no other in indications of a low battery uh, so I'm sorta of gonna rule that out although low battery is often the problem with things on Corvette hold on a second here he comes again okay froggy back I swear every time I go to shoot one of these videos it's either the uh, you know the UPS guy or the ice cream man or my gardener guy or somebody comes and starts making a bunch of noise <laughs> anyway okay battery we're going to assume it's good. There are no other indications of a bad battery. Uh, check the voltage uh, charging and uh, you know before I start it up uh, on the console and the voltages look pretty normal. Uh, we're not going to take the alternator out yet because we're going to try some easy stuff before we do that. So we're going to check this connection. This harness this harness right here where these wires go into runs around the back of the engine and there is hold on okay right there the harness wraps around a bracket a bracket that holds yeah it helps hold the fuel rail yeah it's the fuel rail bracket so GM being GM uh, instead of extending that 
plastic sleeve there instead of extending that up another inch so it came around that sharp corner uh, they just cut it short, short and saved a penny I guess but anyway right there is where your harness can get cut by this bracket because it wraps around really really tight uh, I hope you can see that there right there where that straight edge and the, bra the, the harness wraps around anyway that looks okay so I checked that and uh, the other thing we're going to check is the PCM we're going to check the electrical connection at the PCM which is behind this fender liner I've already pulled the wheel off uh, I don't not, I don't need to show you guys how to pull a wheel off on this uh, video. So here we go. Let's start checking. Here's a section in the uh, factory service manual about charge system fault message right here. So we're going to follow through on some of this troubleshooting. But as I already told you, we don't have a Tech 2, so when it says attach your Tech 2, we're out of luck. But I just wanted to show this to you. Um, this is a two-part factory service manual for the 0406 Corvette. This is worth its weight in gold, even though it sometimes refers you to tools that you don't own and that you can't afford to buy. It still has a lot of good information in it. So let's get back to the car. What I did was I very carefully pried with a screwdriver under this little tab here, this little tab that clips on to this plastic on the back of the alternator and I, I gently move this up and now I'm going to inspect the pins. There's three pins, one is a dummy. I'm looking for corrosion, I'm looking for bent, I'm looking for anything other than a clean connection, a clean electrical connection and I'm gonna get my flashlight but I tell you right now it looks pretty good they look okay I'm gonna squirt a little electrical contact cleaner in there anyway uh, it won't hurt anything and it evaporates almost instantly uh, but looking at both sides and they look pretty good. So we're going to go uh, to the PCM after this. Uh, let me show you how to do the electrical uh, cleaner. Here's what I use, CRC. What's so special about it? Well, it doesn't leave any residue. Other kinds of uh, brake cleaner or automotive parts cleaner might leave a residue. Uh, and it uh, evaporates very fast. So I'm going to shoot some on there, and uh, then I'm going to button it back up. That's it. I'm just going to shake out the excess, maybe blow that out a little bit, and we're done there. All right, blowing out the excess. and gonna get some new batteries in this uh, camera so we'll be back okay we're uh, over checking the PCM we got uh, we got five uh, seven millimeter uh, sheet metal type screws two more underneath See, there's two more over there and then one of those plastic plastic rivet things and then that That'll uh, show the PCM. One more underneath. So, my bad, there's three underneath. And that one uh, was in like kind of sideways, so I didn't see it at first. Okay, I'm back. We're into the PCM. We've got two main uh, harnesses, uh, well, a lot of harnesses, but two main connections that go to the PCM and then there's a black box 
which I apologize, but I don't know what that black box is that has two more connections. So we got four connections that we're inspecting and cleaning. And uh, we're looking for bent pins, corrosion, di discoloration, all those pins up there. You can see some of those pins and the connectors there. And over here, a different type of silver pins and brassy colored pins. And those connectors are, I peeled them back and put them over to the side. So I'm going to clean them all up and put it all back together. And then uh, we're going to see if uh, that code comes back. Uh, if this uh, is any help, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more from Froggy, uh, just uh, subscribe to my channel. Froggy out. One more very important thing. Disconnect your battery before you start this whole deal. Disconnect your battery.